This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How is it going? How are you going, Chris? Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm scared to go to the gas fine. station for obvious reasons. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So, quick one. Gas prices down here, or fuel prices down here, in Australian dollars, $2.17 a litre. So, multiply that by... Because a gallon's like 2.5 litres, I think. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a lot of dollary dues that you got to pay to fill up your tank at the moment, right? So the station that I drive by now, I own, I usually get my gas at uh, Costco, which is always significantly less than your Absolutely. Typical. So do I. Yes. yes. Um, so I haven't ventured there. I'm, I'm venturing there tomorrow. Uh, but the Pack other... a lunch. Because you're going to be waiting there a while. <laughs> no, I checked the line. Like it's not, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was about the okay. usual line it is um, at, uh-huh. at the one that's right by my house. But uh, the other gas station was at uh, $5, five and a half, five and three quarters per gallon. Wow. What's it normally over there? Uh, will be for uh, this whole Russia-Ukrainian mess, it was four, four and a half to four and three quarter. At the regular gas station, so it's oh, shot okay. up so it's... by a clean, clean dollar, dollar and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it's normally about. It has been normally hovers around uh, one dollar forty a liter Australian down mm-hmm. here. So it's jumped up a lot. And I heard that in New Zealand, it's four dollars a liter. Oof. Four dollars a liter now. That's their fuel prices normally are around two dollars something a liter over there, but four bucks a liter. Like I had to make a call yesterday. The kids and I went to Netherworld yesterday for a bit of a, a flip and some ice cream and stuff. And uh, I went, yeah, we're we're catching the train in. I'm not driving in at two dollars a liter. Right. Like, right. You know. Well, I mean, because <laughs> I I <laughs> I'd had the intention of going with my friend to Vegas to the Pinball Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Um, Not with those prices. But, <laughs> well, the only thing is he has a Prius, so that right, will okay. help us. But it's like, it definitely has suddenly put a big damper on, oh, wait a second, do we really need to go right now, or can we wait even longer? I don't know. <laughs> My prediction will be uh, in like three to 12 months' time, probably a lot earlier, the 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 sales of electric vehicles will skyrocket oh, yeah. everywhere in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm this so... is this is the wake up call that people need. I've had this wake up call for some time. The problem is, is I just can't afford one. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I want one so badly. Like, yes, but the thing is, at the moment, I'm like you know, I I want one. I don't think the tech's mature enough to actually be good enough yet. Like the... my point has been, I don't want one that's only good for a hundred mile charge. I want. That's exactly. I need problem. one that's over the two hundred mark, which believe you know now you're in Tesla territory. Um, yeah. So. And you know, eighty thousand dollars down here in Australia for one of those. <laughs> so you know, it's it's basically a European import price, right. for a car. You know. Yeah. It's just too much. Uh, I'm just going to remind folks of something here. I mean, obviously, mm. this situation situation with Ukraine is it's horrible, terrible. Um, yeah. Hungary, where Budapest is, where Zen is located, it's right there next to the Ukraine. <laughs> yeah, in that little sort of pocket up there. So of, if you, know, you don't think that there's some concerns going on among those employees, uh, I'm pretty sure there's some concerns going on among those employees. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would like that's way too close to for me. Yeah, as as a person down the other side of the world, because I, for, I for guarantee yeah, that some of those employees have relations with people in the Ukraine. Um, oh, of course. Considering yeah. con- considering Gord, who runs uh, Digital Pinball Fans, his wife is Ukrainian and he lives in Canada. <laughs> so exactly, I think. That this whole situation is showing that you know, that, well, Ukraine is is small and it's it's not not really that. Well, it's the largest European country, I believe. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> it's not that small. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's up there, but yes. it affects everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's yeah. 
so uh the world is a small place yeah hopefully you know our, our Obviously, thoughts are with the people that are that are suffering through this right now. But um, mm. uh, where it touches us in the pinball community, um, obviously, that's going to affect Magic Pixel also because they're based in Budapest. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, thoughts are with the uh, with those that we are to a closer extent connected with <laughs> via yeah, digitally right. or whatever. So stay safe. Yeah. Um, what yeah. else is going on? Let's see. Uh, ah, yes. I am uh, officially going to become a a villager on the planet of Batu, or not the planet of Batu. Well, I guess I don't know what it, the planet is. Anyway, I'm getting trained for Galaxy's Edge, so I get to go uh, take photos in a galaxy far, far away soon. Oh, that's awesome! Yes, so I'm rather yeah, happy that's... that I get to be paid to be a cosplayer. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fantastic because it looks like I've seen like YouTube videos of you know uh, park enthusiasts who go there and that. It seems like the way that they do, or all the people who actually are dressed up in cosplay, they really get into it. Like oh yeah, the stormtroopers especially, because they're essentially completely covered. Yeah, they just have a, a great time with yeah. the guests. So I'd imagine it's going to be the same for you. Probably not with a big uh, helmet on your face. No, you I won't have photos. a helmet on my face. No, I, I need to actually be able to hold a camera still up to my face to take pictures. <laughs> Yeah, otherwise you have the same problem as stormtroopers. You might be able to take a straight shot to save yourself. <laughs> Can you imagine? People get their photos and it's just like... They're, It'll they're, be off they're, to the they're, side. They're, yeah, they're like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly you know, right. Yeah. Well, that's going to be awesome. What do you get to start doing that? Where, uh, where can people find Training you? is... Uh, I start training at the end of uh, this next week. Awesome. So, and yeah. then how long does the training go for until you can oh, It's only like two days. They're, they're basically, you spend a oh, day... Cool. Um, uh, learning how to live on that planet, and then oh. another day learning how to take photos on that planet. <laughs> so, right. Okay. Yeah. That sounds really interesting. Yeah. Well, good luck, and I hope that because uh, you in the you're in the California park, obviously, yes. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. You have to go and keep an eye out for Chris if anyone's up that way. I would say, you know mm. what? If if you come to Disneyland, <laughs> oops. Mm. If you come to Disneyland, and you happen to spot me as a photographer and you walk up to me and you go blockade it's not that i can give you your pictures for free but i'll give you extra special pictures i'll make sure mm-hmm. that uh, you're you you get a good good, good long bang photo for your session buck. yes good bang for or it'd be buck. just nice to talk to somebody <laughs> it would be that'd be really cool yeah yeah so Feel free to, uh, to to hit me up when you're at Disneyland there. Um, all right. Today we're going to talk about... Uh, it's basically going to be only one topic. But before we get into that, we had our interview, uh, not last week, but last <laughs> podcast with uh, Tony Walsh from mm. uh, uh, with Rollers of the Realm Reunion. Yeah. Phantom Compass is the, uh, the publishing or the studio there that makes that. And uh, mm. Tony was kind enough to give us uh, five codes to give away for the original Rollers of the Realm. Yes. So we need to give those codes away. Now, obviously, we would love to give it to people that have not played Rollers of the Realm. <laughs> if you That's already, right. If you already own Rollers of the Realm, there's no point in you playing along with this contest. But maybe you Unless could... you know a mate. Unless exactly. you know a mate who you know would absolutely love it. And in that case... We'd love to hear from you. Yes. So here's here's how we're going to run this contest. Uh, during the course of this episode, we're going to be holding up a phrase. Jared's got one, and I've got one. It'll be visible on screen very momentarily. Please yeah. make note of those phrases. Then you're going to fire off an email to us on March 19th at or after 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time to mm-hmm. blah blah blockade at gmail.com. Don't worry, I'll put the info into the uh, the description the YouTube. here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so blah blah blockade at gmail.com. Uh, subject rollers contest. Put that in the subject line for us. And then in the body of the text you can say whatever you want, but please include the two phrases that you saw in this episode. First five people to fire off an email to us on March nineteenth will give you those codes. Uh, to be able to uh, play the original Rollers of the Realm. Contest ends on March 19th, Pacific Daylight Time, uh, at midnight. 
So thereafter, if you got to be on that day, send it off. No waiting around. Uh, that's why we're giving it a little bit of time so that everybody has a fair chance to be able to uh, fire off that email. Um, yeah, because there's nothing worse. I, I hate shows that require you to literally be on the the day of the premiere, the day date time, yeah. and the first five to get in after that. That annoys me so much. Yeah, because you know I'm always asleep usually when those ones run. Exactly. <laughs> um, so there's something to pay attention to throughout the course of the show. Um, mm. And that was a that was a lot of fun talking to Tony, and I think we'll be uh, talking to him again uh, as, more. Uh, yeah, as Rollers of the Realm reunion. Uh, gets closer to release. Um, so. I can't wait. I, I really am looking forward to playing that game t- in the full version because the demo we had access to, and thanks to Tony for that, was so much fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, However, today, well, obviously, Indiana Jones, uh, the Williams Pinball Adventure, or the Pinball Adventure by Williams. I don't know. Is it Williams? Pin- no, it's just the Pinball Adventure. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, it got released by Zen. It got it released did. on uh, quite a few platforms there. <laughs> to all the, what they call the legacy platforms. Yes, all, and everything that could play FX3. Um, yeah. It even popped up on Android and iOS on the uh, Williams app. Uh, Which is interesting because they said that those, like way, way back when we asked about it, it's like, yeah, those apps are essentially now dead. But there's right. still one little breath of life still squeaked it out. Indie yeah. Where it did not pop up, and obviously we delayed our show by a week because uh, we were expecting the pinball show to have an episode and talk about pricing and of I don't probably just pinball effects in general. Um, but mm-hmm. obviously the pricing yeah. of Indiana Jones is going to be uh, put into there. Uh, that show got delayed uh, for what reasons? Don't know. Again, if we Lots had to speculate, stuff, yeah, yeah. If we had to speculate. Again, where's Budapest? Where's the Ukraine? I don't know if that has anything to do with it. it I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, not the sole reason. Maybe not a large portion of the reason why the show got delayed. But I suspect there might be some underlying issues. <laughs> I would think so. I mean, I know what it's like. Like we had the floods recently down here. Yeah. I won't go into too much detail. You know, it was all over the news, probably worldwide news. Um, and you know, it distracts you when there's yeah. something happening around you, you can't help but get drawn into it. So I'd imagine that something like a, a war would probably do that to you. Yeah. Why yeah. it's able to though release on, uh, FX three and as opposed to the launching of, uh, early access for the Epic games version. That's what, again, don't know, don't know what happened there. Um, it's kind of useless to point fingers. Um, it's also kind of. Uh, not fair to go, hey, Zen, tell us everything of why this went wrong. That doesn't make much sense either. <laughs> um, not really. Not from a company standpoint. Uh, but so everything that is FX3, yay, you get uh, Indiana Jones if you were uh, hoping to play it in the Epic Games Store early access. Going to have to wait a little bit more. Um, mm-hmm. Initial thoughts, Jared, of, uh, and full disclosure, yes. We received codes on Steam to be able to play Indiana Jones. Just getting yes, that out there do. um, does not necessarily uh, change how our view was because I had mm. every intention of laying down the money and purchasing this, um, regardless of if yep. we were going to get the codes or not. So, But just want to yep. put that out there because I know some people are going to be like, for oh, whatever we're about paid. to say, they're going to go, oh, yeah, you're saying that because you got it. No, not saying that. <laughs> well, I think after after you hear what we're going to say about it, yes, um, you'll probably think that we <laughs> we, we maybe not be paid, right? Um, so, about but it. initial thoughts, Jared. On uh, I know that neither of us have had really a long time to be able to futz around with with the game just because it works. No, us. but what's your initial yeah, thoughts feel, of uh, firing it up? I feel really guilty about that too because normally when we do something like this, we like to really get into it, play it for a long time. But uh, I mean. I know this game really well. I I spent probably hundreds of dollars on it in the arcade mm. when it was new and continued to spend hundreds of dollars on it when I found them in the wild after it was released 10 or 15 years ago. Like, it's a great game to play, and I've played it a lot. Okay, I'm going to pause you right uh, there and just say my history with it. Uh, not as extensive as yours. <laughs> 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 I didn't get to see it that often in the wild. Um and when it was there, 
when every other game was 50 cents to play, I think that one was 75 cents to play. <laughs> and so mm. I typically didn't... Actually, I don't know if it was... I don't know what the pricing would have been, 50 cents for all the other games. I just remember I would tend to look at the price of Indiana Jones and go, no, you know what? I think I'll play Adam's Family again and get two games in on that rather than one game in mm. on Indy. Um, and then yeah, the yeah. last time I played it was at uh, one of the league events that I went to, uh, probably maybe three years ago, I think. Right. Um, and there was one that was in pro. It was beautiful condition. Um, yeah. And it was kicking everybody's butt, except for one guy who was like a top pinball ranked international. Player. Yeah, top ranked player who proceeded to wizard mode the Blow thing on one ball. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's something. So I, I know we're just trying to talk about the digital version here, but wizard moding this game, it's not easy in real life. So if you can do it, if you go, oh, wow, I can do this in Zen, no problems at all. Yeah. <laughs> Try doing it on a real machine set up in an arcade for dollary dues because I tell you what, you're going to get a rude surprise. Um, it's hard and it's a deep game. Um, and it's probably like of its era, it has a lot of modes on it. Um, oh, God, yeah, it's got a ton of modes. of modes. Yeah. Yeah, so getting it, it to almost, that wizard mode. It almost puts... Twilight Zone to shame with Twilight what? Zone's got a lot of things that you have to earn around the thing, but this one's got actual modes. Yeah. So things that you need to do to accomplish stuff in the game. And those modes, obviously, if you're not really that familiar with the game, play an a really important role in your bonus because they're do not tilt this game. Um, because any mode um earnings you win are added to your bonus at the end. So you will get a colossal bonus, and it's how you actually get high scores. I was going to say, because this, this is one of those games where the points are in the bonus, not so much in the actual gameplay. I mean, you you can definitely get some points in the game. Like, super jackpots in this game are right. very lucrative, but you have to build up to that, obviously. Um, but yeah, the, the, the modes are absolutely... If there was a wizard pin on this at Netherworld, the modes are where it's at. That's where you get your points. Um, so... Yeah, with that in mind, um, it's uh, it's it's modes, modes, modes all day. Um, so, from my perspective, I played both the the pro physics mode and the Zen physics mode on it. Mm -hmm. I've played it with digital effects on, and like enhancements on, enhancement off. Um, so I've at least done that in the time I've been able to play it. So Same that's here. something, right? Same yeah. here. So we, we've got that at least. We've seen all the different modes. So, Well, I'll start no, I've seen the, a few modes. <laughs> yeah, we've seen all, sorry, the gameplay modes and types that Zen's offering. Not all the game modes. Because, no, yeah, I still haven't even that. gotten the, uh, the you chose poorly mode. Poorly. Uh, <laughs> I have. I've got it. But um, yeah, so um, I will say that the, the pro physics on this, um, I... I I have to say one word, tricky. <laughs> they are they are very accurate. I was, gonna say, I was just going to say, so as you're somebody that has a lot of experience with the actual machine, just yeah. what's your... Because here's the thing. A lot of comments that we see in threads and discussions are of people saying, well, it feels really floaty or it feels really bouncy. And this isn't about Indiana Jones. This will be just like about any of the Williams tables. And then you yes. push and prod the people and you find out they've never touched a real machine in their life. Correct. So, Jared, having touched this machine lovingly and deeply for a long, mm -hmm. long time. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you're saying that the, the mm -hmm. pro physics are matching your expectations uh, fairly closely. Yeah, I can. I know this because, like, switching... The, the, the first tell with this game is if it's set up correctly, the ball, when you shoot it, will always go to the first or second, or the I or the N rollover mm -hmm. lane at the top always you can guarantee it you can put mm -hmm. money down and you'll get the win every time um <clears throat> and in <clears throat> excuse me in the simulation um in pro physics it will do that every time um if you're playing in zen physics it's actually really random it up is the top. like the ball will just bounce so around everywhere so with the pro physics it's it's really accurate up there let me ask you um, this uh because this was a question that i had upon immediately playing it uh, mm -hmm. After it bounces around, and it goes down the uh, left yep. side of the or what do you call that the orbit? Yeah, 
yep. um, comes down, I was expecting it to go straight to my left flipper. Instead, mm. it grazes the left slingshot and goes, doing and bounces. Is that an accurate representation? In pro physics? In pro physics, this was happening. Um, no. It, so I, it should I'm, go straight to the, the left flipper, the, in your experience. Well, it depends. Again, this is, this is one of those, like, every game is different. Every game is yes. set up differently. So this particular game that Zen has, it may have really tight slingshot switches set on it, and they'd be modeling it after that. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally speaking, if your ball rolls down the left hand lane, you can normally grab it or control it enough to catch it on the left flipper. Okay. Like it will feed, it should feed down there pretty well. Um, it shouldn't really be bouncing around crazily. Like you should be able to get a catch on that first. Well, more or less, we, it, what, and I guess you didn't notice it, but more or less what was happening was it's going down, hitting that left flipper or left uh, sling and bouncing it over to the right flipper that you would better flip the ball. Otherwise it's going to go house ball and go center, center drain right on you. Yeah. Okay. Now I didn't, I didn't detect that subtlety, but okay. it shouldn't really be hitting that sling. And when it comes down, okay. um, you should at least be able to catch it. Uh, very similar to how you do it on Medieval Madness from that right feed. Right. From the, yeah. Correct. So it should behave like that. That's so what at I least you can get a, be. at least you can get some control off the bat and mm. pick a shot to take. Um, so yeah. So as it, so we've covered the launch. We covered as it feeds down through the pop bumpers to the left return. What I did find, though, and this could just be because I have not picked up FX3 for months now, and yeah. I've not played Williams Tables at all for months. I've been abstaining um, a lot, actually. Um, and it's in some cases, it's been because I just haven't had time, but you know, I also kind of wanted to have some distance between the games so I could see FX when it comes out on Unreal and really get a, be blown away by the, the differences, I guess. Um, so <clears throat> what I noticed was... In pro physics, the shot making with the flippers feels different to the other pro physics implementations. Mm. Um, I've I've found that finding the shots on the table was different, and I thought, hmm, is it just my view? Am I am I playing in a view that I wasn't normally accustomed to? Maybe that's affecting my position on the flipper, you know? Because that's the thing. Um, when you're playing Zen, it's actually really useful to try different views because you will get a different experience and a diff- different shot making experience yep. based on the perspective you're looking mm-hmm. at. So I, I flicked it up to like a more top down view, and that seemed to help a little bit. Um, but I still found that it, yeah, in in the pro physics mode, it you really have to be quite accurate, and you have to adjust the way that you play. I think. I don't know. It could have just been one of those things where I was rusty and the first couple of goes I had made me feel like that. Right. But it was noticeable to me. Now, are you saying um, this is a positive or a negative? I think it could be classed as a negative. Okay. Um, which is why I'm being careful about how I describe it because it could just be me. It could be a me thing. I could just suck because <laughs> I haven't played <laughs> FX3 for a while. So I don't want to call it out as a thing that's like really wrong it's probably I, it probably is me so mm. i just need to play it more what a what a bad problem to have i need to play right. this game more right because <laughs> i'm going to say with what i was experiencing um and and my recollection of how i've played the table itself in the past uh just trying to combo the 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 airplane ramps yeah over and over again it's brutal for me on the real machine. Like, yeah, yeah. That's a it's massive hard. challenge to do. Um, yeah. And in this, I was glad that it wasn't easy. Mm. But was I able to combo them more than twice? Yes. On occasion, I got into that rhythm and was able to do it, just like you should be able to do on Medieval Madness. Um, yeah, right. It's that same kind of feel, or the same thing you should be able to do on Metallica. Um, yep. It very much It feels doable, but at the same hand, it's not just an easy gimme. Uh, yeah, it's not suction ramps like it would have been on um, Pinball Arcade. Precisely. So mm-hmm. I almost... But on the same hand, if I capture the ball and I take my time and I aim and I miss once and I make the slight correction and I miss again and then I make the final you know, third correction and then I nail it, that to me feels like it should. 
the, yeah, the, that's pinball. I'm able to make the corrections and find the shot. And then the next time I get the ball, I'm able to duplicate and find the shot again. So yeah, that's right. I almost view it as a positive. That's why I was asking. You're going negative or positive? But I, because I. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you're right. In general, I, I'm glad that the table's not just gimmicking things. Um, it's yeah, exactly. Me, it's, it, it's making me actually show that I need some skill to make it happen. So what I do like when, because we're talking about ramps, like that path of adventure ramp when it's open mm -hmm. is like it, the ball should not fly up there. It should make it, but it shouldn't be going too fast at the top. And that's how it feels it, with, with pro physics. Like it feels like you need to really drive the ball up that ramp with a very clean shot. And it's mean if you don't give and make it up the ramp. <laughs> It's danger time, right? Like, well, it's, it's just like the captured come... ball is such a sucker bet. Oh yeah, it is. You know. Like you've got to you've got to have your wits about you when you're like when you hit that captured ball because yeah, it, it'll either rattle around enough to slow down, or you're losing it down the guts unless yeah. you unless you death save it. Yeah. So we'll tip and, save it. And so, I, and, and so back to me watching the uh, the professional player on the machine wizard moding the thing. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen somebody uh, uh, subtly nudge a table more. Oh, yeah. Oh Just my when god! When the ball's nowhere near the flipper, yeah. Dude, he was nudging the crap out of that thing, mm -hmm. um, and making sure to have absolute ball control. And what I noticed with a few of the players that were obviously better than me, but were also sucking at it, when it finally got to their ball to do it, they started duplicating some of the timings of where his nudges were, and all of a sudden they were having much better gameplay. Yep. So that's the kind of table this is, where it's uh, it's going to be nasty to you if you're not nasty back to it. <laughs> yeah, you got to give it a bit of to and fro, yeah. uh, for sure. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's... Uh, it, 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 you need to be active on it. You can't just be standing there passively what did, flipping the ball around. So what did you think of the Zen physics in play? Oh yeah, I'd like them. Um, they're definitely they feel right. Um, they were kicking my ass, um, and that's how they should be. Like it should be a, a a marked improvement on the amount of effort you need to put in to get a good score. Um, and yeah, they they were definitely they felt good. Apart from me sucking. Well, no, I'm um, talking the, the the Zen physics, not the Williams physics. The oh, Zen sorry, Zen. Physics. Yeah, yeah, sorry. This is the problem. Like labels for these things is like pro Zen things that, and we're going to cover that, aren't we? Um, um, yeah, my... Not in this episode, but we will say this: Zen. Just call it simulation and Zen, or yeah, make something. it clear. Quit with the cutesy names uh, because there's a difference. We've covered this before. We're in the Williams Pinball app. It's just pro physics and regular physics, and then in FX3, it's single player physics and classic physics, which yeah, you can pick then arcade classic. or tournament. No, it doesn't need just, to be this difficult. Just call it. It's Zen really physics. hard to describe. Like it really yeah. is. Yeah, pick something and stick with it across the way, but make it easy. You know, either call it yep. Zen and simulation, or call it. Uh, I think you should just call it Zen physics, and then whatever the hell you want to call it the other. You, yeah, whatever. Zen just physics. Zen and physics. Williams physics. Well, I mean, whatever. obviously, you can't call it Williams physics because that's gonna. Because they're gonna be putting it. That's like, a licensing thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's true. But but if you want to stick with pro physics, fine. Say pro physics. Yeah. You know, pro or but... simulation, either or, I, I I would go for. But enough with this. Oh, because like, when we have discussions in threads. I see it all the time. Well, I was playing single player, you know, single player physics. Oh, well, I was playing classic physics. Well, aren't they the same thing? Well, no. Well, we, were you playing the one where you have uh, enhancements available? You're, well, what enhancements? Okay, were you playing the one with passive power ups or the one where you don't have power ups? Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> it's hard. It really is hard. Yeah. It doesn't need to be so, that complicated. <laughs> you're right. So, yeah, it would be better to, to so, Zen address physics. that. Zen physics. So your Zen physics, um, I en I enjoyed it a lot more, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I I had uh, it, it's definitely more forgiving and it's honestly more enjoyable to play the game. Uh, my scores tripled. Well, sure. Um, playing Zen physics. Um, so here's for folks if you want to really be able to identify 
even in videos uh, that you watch mm. online, where you go, wait, are they playing the Williams physics or are they playing the Zen physics? Look at the flippers. Yeah. Here's the indication. I'm going to get, where's my camera? There we go. Okay, so yeah. Zen physics, when the flippers flip up, they go like that high. Real high, yeah. I noticed Williams that. physics, they're more like, Shallower. well, they're slightly up. They're not, yeah. they're not level, but they're only slightly up. Yep. Zen physics, Williams physics. Zen physics, yep. Williams physics. Um, that's your key indicator mm-hmm. uh, as to which version you're playing. Um, yep. Don't judge it off of how the ball is bouncing or how the floaty it is. Uh, because when you play like Son of Zeus, uh, when Deep programmed that, and this is one of the reasons why we like that table and why we featured it <laughs> in the table reveal, because mm. the ball bounces in there felt very much like it would on an actual real table. That's right. The flippers were still really a steep, which makes capturing the ball very easy on Indiana Jones. Um, yep. But the actual bounciness of the ball on Son of Zeus was quite bouncy. Compare that to, you know, when you're playing, I don't know, like Iron Man, where it's just this leaden ball. No, oh, yeah. But you still have the same flipper angle, you know. So Yep. There's your 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 quick primer on on that. But anyway. <laughs> I interesting yeah. enough, Jared, my score is sucked using the Zen physics. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know why. That's that's really I, odd. I wasn't doing good with the Zen physics. Um I, I have no answer for that. <laughs> you might have just been having a sucky go as well. Who knows? It's it's it's, it's possible. Uh, mm. Let's talk about the visual enhancements. Um, mm. There's some subtleties and some not so subtleties that go on with the visual enhancements. Uh, one of the subtleties is all of a sudden there is a clear plastic over certain areas of the playfield so that Indy has some place to stand. Yeah, that's true. That is uh, the biggest thing I've found. And uh, if you've ever played the game um, in in the arcades, you'll know that. Uh, the feed off the drop targets uh, is such that um, you get quite a, a volatile ball happening um, off them. And the it will often shoot off the um, drop targets and go right to the very left of the play field, which is why they have this sort of metal shield, if you like, um, in the in the regular game to stop the balls instantly draining out mm. the side of the machine. And it sort of felt weird seeing that plastic shield over that area because I thought, oh, yeah, let's see if they let's see what happens if we get air balls <laughs> um, and what happens with that plastic shield and how it interacts with um, the game, like whether it's actually a like a gameplay surface mm. or whether it's actually just a visual surface, you know, like if the balls will actually go through it. Um, I haven't actually seen a lot of air balls from the drop targets yet. Um, you know... I was just thinking about it. Although I know air balls exist to a certain extent in some of the Williams tables that Zen has done, um, they're nowhere near as prominent as they are on an actual machine. An actual yeah, machine, right. my God, that ball. I mean, almost any pinball mach- machine I've played, uh, at some point the ball is whacking against the glass of the of the table. Oh, yeah. At some Absolutely. point. Whereas in this rarely will I see a ball actually jump. Um, yeah. and, and you should really notice it in multi-ball. That's right. Where the when balls there's balls are just careening, careening against, against each other. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So there's 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 the 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 last bastion for deep to work on, getting air balls. <laughs> air balls. That's right. <laughs> air ball physics. Yep. I actually had one the other day in real life when I was at uh when I was playing medieval madness, there was a ball over a troll <laughs> when it popped up and boy, did oh. you realize that the ball was going at quite a rapid speed yeah. above that troll when it popped boy it was loud um yeah so that's one that's a, a good observation about that shield area so indy has a place to stand um the the idle area like all the textures change don't they yeah they this, did like when you go into they're all different they're all shinier they're all a completely different color actually mm-hmm. um so they're a lot richer like it's still like a, in the original game there's like a sort of a a light rose gold tint to all of the um the the chrome surfaces but in the zen um enhancements the the visual enhancements wow everything is super deep gold chrome um very very chrome 
um, gold chrome. So yeah, that's another thing that I noticed that really jumped out at me. I think um, the thing that jumped out at me the most was the airplanes disappearing <laughs> when you're in yeah, the visual right. enhancements. They just plain are not yeah. on the table until you hit the yep. ramp. Once you hit one of the airplane ramps, all of a sudden the airplane goes, goes flying around, which can mm. be a bit distracting. <laughs> I didn't enjoy that, honestly. Like that visual feature, I went, oh, that's no. It's mm. actually worse than the um, dragon flying around at the <laughs> madness. Where because I, it happens so often. Right. That's the Where I enjoyed it was when you eventually shoot down one of the planes, it goes and crashes into the side of the machine and explodes, <laughs> which I thought was yeah, pretty see, cool. Yeah, right, right. That's cool. But. Yeah, as, as as for them flying around the screen, like quite in your field of view, like over that main lower playfield area, it feels like the wrong place to put it. And maybe that's view dependent. I don't know. It depends on what view you're playing. Might well, affect uh, and, how that uh, looks. Yeah, and and I'll say this: I'm playing uh, in portrait mode, cabinet mode. You know, so my ro- mm. my screen's rotated. I'm doing full screen, top down view. Um, yep, right. So that's affecting certain things in that area. Um, mm-hmm. I noticed all the pop up scores also uh, like become too much so you got pop-up scores you got airplanes flying around uh you're doing castle grundewald and rain is falling uh that rain effect looks so good in the rolling demo but wow it's so distracting (laughs) in when you're playing it like it's it adds a, a layer of complexity to that mode that you just don't need um because i mean it's already hard to start with that Castle Grunewald centers around the the um, captive ball, mm-hmm. so that's horrible to start with. And then you add in rain, which maybe it will be different in the um, pinball FX version, not the FX3 version, with you know um, Unreal's um, advanced ray tracing and lighting, etc. But yeah. like the the raindrops, like they're quite opaque, so th- it's like there's a lot of action on the screen. Yeah that you also have to track with your ball and it's like I had to turn it off I went oh no I, I have to turn this off now yeah it was too much um the other thing that I noticed with uh and this is actually a I think a probably a, a bigger problem and that is that when you have visual extras on and you lock a ball the the time it takes for that ball to go from the drop target trough to the idle and release the ball for next play, it's actually longer with the visual effects on because Indy has to actually animate um, to get over there. Normally that process is around from the point at which the ball drops into the hole uh, and goes to the mechanism that loads the idle. It's a five second round trip from ball into the trough to ball into the shooter lane. And with visual uh, extras on, you're getting an extra two seconds of wait time per ball lock for that whole thing to complete because Indy's got to turn the idle. And I don't think that visual extras should affect the underlying mechanics of the table and how long you have to wait for balls to traverse through playfield mechanisms. I just think that's a poor design decision and it interrupts flow. And I was going, Carl, can we just hurry this up? And I ended up turning off visual extras because it was frustrating me mm-hmm. that I had to wait longer for that animation to complete. Mm-hmm. So, like, my advice is then, like, rethink that animation. Cut out... I think the problem is that when Indy stows his whip, like, he has to fold up his right. whip, stow it on his belt, and then turn the idle. Remove that animation, and you'll solve the problem. But, but just in future, don't make animations to the detriment of mechanical features in the game. It just doesn't feel right. I'm going to go out on a limb and say they're not going to change the animation. <laughs> I'd had, say they're probably we, not. We've had animation issues before, but like things that we've said, hey, we didn't like the animation of this. It, it's affecting, you know, whatever. And yeah. I think that's a step too far. It, it, or, or not a step too far, but... A step too far for them to go back and revisit it. Yeah, it's not, and it's I, not I can... going to be worth the R&D to do basically well, the problem is too and particularly with something as complex to license as indiana jones i would imagine that every single animation in that game would have been vetted oh i'm sure and, it was and very closely monitored uh-huh. and it may be that 
that animation is the way it is mm-hmm. because the licensors wanted it to be that way. Mm-hmm. So it may be that my request, they probably go on, mm-hmm, we don't like it either, but we had to do it like this yeah. because licensing. Yeah. And Which, that's okay. We could turn it off. Yeah. And, and I was just going to say, that's that's the thing with the visual enhancement. You don't like it? Hey, you can turn it off. You don't have to play with it on. So, and you can turn it on and off at will. Mm-hmm. So if there's, a, if you know that there's an animation that you know I'm going to lock the ball now, turn it off, turn it back on again when it's finished. So um, for instance, if I'm playing Theater of Magic, um, uh, in general, I don't play it with the enhancements on because I don't really care for any of the enhancements that are there. But mm-hmm. the one that is just like, oh, huh, is when you vanish the ball and now you're playing with a clear ball. Oh, that's no. That's the worst. A horrible. That's a yeah. horrible idea. So... Boom! Instantly, I'm hitting turn off visual enhancements when that happens. So yeah, you know it's the same thing. Hey, it it looks cool, great to show to your friends, but is it helping the game? Not really. No. And in general, I'm gonna say the visual enhancements on Indiana Jones, I'm probably not gonna be playing with them on because I think that they do no. hinder your gameplay exp- scoring more. Yeah. Um, are they fun if you just like don't care? about your score and you just want to mess around. Yes. I think they did a fantastic yeah. look on them. They look great. They're themed yeah. well with, uh, like it, <laughs> it, it's not like uh, a hurricane where you got creepy clown. No. Yeah. I don't want no part of it's, it's yeah, that's not a like hard pass to the visual impairments <laughs> for some of that game boy. I do not like, like I do not like uh, the the clown creepy clown on that no, table. No, um, <laughs> as opposed to say Doctor Dude, where I really like yeah, the animations. Awesome. They, I think I'm like yes, I want to play with the, the enhancements on all the time. I love it. Or uh, 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 Monsters of Rock. Monster Bash. Monster Bash. I'm like, that's not all right. <laughs> that's a mode. That's what uh, you yeah. get in the game. Exactly. Yeah. Monster Bash. Love the visual enhancements. I play with those yeah. on all the a time. creature. When he comes through the... the, the you know uh, what? The actual... Creature, I turn off. Oh, it distracts you? Distracts yeah. me. Distracts me. I so. think it's interesting. Like, we could probably go into like a whole what what features are, what visual enhancements are good and not and why. Hmm, but a future think... episode. Let's save that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But um, uh, yeah, for me, I... I will be probably passing on the visual enhancements, except, and this is the thing that really annoys me, like to get the, the the other thing that's really cool in the visual enhancements is the center play field Yep. where you have the ring, the bonus multiplier ring with all the characters around it. Mm -hmm. And that gets replaced by video animations, bespoke video animations that are in the game. I'd love that to be on all the time. Yeah. Like that, that to me is like, if there was a mod available in the game that mm-hmm. you could buy, mm-hmm. like for four hundred dollars, and put it into your Indiana Jones, I'd do that. Yeah. That would be an incredible mod. But you have to have the visual enhancements on to see it, and all the other stuff that goes on those visual enhancements, I will probably never get to enjoy that because I won't be able to see it. So it's linked to enhancements. The one thing that I noticed while playing between, and this is playing between Pro Physics and Zen Physics. Mm-hmm. That was kind of an oddity, and I don't know how to explain it. Again, I'm playing portrait mode, so my screen yep. is looking like this, right? Like that. Top down, top yep. down view. Uh-huh. And uh, when you go to, I tend to turn off the, uh, uh, I don't know, what, what, what do they call it? The, the, basically where the table zooms into a special feature. So, like if you're playing, uh, Oh, champion. multiple multiple cameras, I think they call it. Or something like, like if you're playing Champion Pub yeah. and all of a sudden you get jump rope, it zooms into the jump rope so you can actually see because obviously yeah. you're too far away. Um, but I turn those off because since I'm playing it as if it was a table you know, in front of me, um, that's just as close to me as the flipper is down at the bottom. I can see it perfectly yeah, that's fine. Right. So I tend mm-hmm. to turn those off. And so I'm playing Indiana Jones, I'm playing in uh, Pro Physics, and get to Path of Adventure, and yeah, Path of Adventure is up in there in the corner, and it's doing its little rotate thing, and you know, I can see it just fine. Hmm. Then I switch over to Zen Physics, and I get to Path of Adventure, and my screen goes from you know being top down like this to all of a sudden going like that angle. Oh, perspective mode. Yeah, and right. way in the back here is Path of Adventure, instead of being closer when it was like this, and I can see you know the entirety of it. Huh. And it was kind of like, well, wait, no, I don't want that. Turn that off. Th- that's not good. I don't know why it changed from 
what it was in pro physics to what it was in Zen physics. Similarly, when I went to video mode, now I'm playing with a second monitor. I put my back glass on the monitor. Yes, folks, I have made an Indiana Jones uh, back glass for you to uh, to be able to play with. And I have to upload that. Yeah, to, to uh, upload to the, that. And yeah. uh, the DMD is obviously also over there. Yep. And so when video mode comes up, I have to look at my second monitor and play with the DMD over there. Mm -hmm. In Zen physics, the DMD pops up like the table zooms in, pops up massive on the screen, and then you play mm -hmm. the video mode there. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, because now it's an even bigger DMD, but it does throw off the illusion of me having this table in front of me. Again, mm -hmm. why it did that in Zen physics and doesn't do that in Pro, I don't know, because nothing changed in my settings for how it should be displaying. It's got to be a bug. Yeah, that was a little, like, that was a little little odd. But. Yeah, I think that's just a, a bug. So overall overall impression, this is going to lead us into our next segment here. Overall mm -hmm. impression and the big issue. Did Zen do a good job? Is it worth the price point? Okay. So for me, yes, they did do a good job. If you take away the visual extras and all the extra panache they put into the game, and you look at the actual gameplay experience itself and the way they presented the table in its regular form, yes, they have done what I think is a really good job on this table. It's a, it's a really nice way to finish off the, SF, the FX3 library uh, and usher in the new version of the platform. Um, so yes, that would be my call. They have done a good job. Okay. I do agree. It's not this this wasn't hastily thrown together and i'm going to point to in the wayback machine when farsight put out their last two tables on their engine being uh big buck hunter and whoa nelly big Bunt big buck hunter especially looking like it was just a regression uh Lots of visual issues, lots of gameplay issues. It just didn't feel um, good at all. And considering Zen is making this on two engines, they could have mm. easily uh, just hastily thrown together the FX3 version, knowing that they they're going to have a much better version in Pinball FX. Yeah. I don't feel like that's the case at all. I feel no. like uh, from what I've seen here, it plays just as well. Uh, if not better in terms of the physics uh, to all the other Williams tables that they've done. Obviously, we haven't gotten our hands on the Epics, the Epics, the Epic game uh, version, the the Unreal Engine version of the game. No. Um, and that'll be very interesting, and we definitely will do uh, a comparison thoughts between those two. Yes. When it comes to the price tag, and we're going to get into this right now here. Um is it worth the $15? I'm going to say yes. Is it worth it if you're going to be buying it on Steam and on Switch and on your PS4? And are you going to pay the $15 to play it in the Williams app? There's what I'm going to say. Slow your roll. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because um, it pump is... Pump the brakes, folks. Yeah, pump the brakes. Because that's A, a lot of money to be spreading around for this it is. and B, where are you going to be playing it most? Yeah. Um, if you're a PC player and you are still on the fence regarding this, fine, wait until the Epic Store version comes out, which is going mm. to happen soon. Yeah. They're not going to be sitting on this long. Again, there's it's still in the month of March. We are promised that it would be coming in March. Uh, we've just missed the day and date with everything else. Obviously... Yeah. When you submit to game stores like with Nintendo and PlayStation and Xbox, you're submitting weeks in advance yes. for the timing of it. So whatever delay happened, they just had to roll with it. Yeah. Essentially, you submit and then you just go, okay, right. we're, we're, it's in the hands of the gods now. Right. Like we're going with, to With and Steam and Epic, that they can turn on and off in a day's time. Yeah. They have so, total control over that. Yeah. They have total control over that. Um, so if you're on the fence, and because about, this is oh, sorry, Chris, and because this is this is a coordinated release, yeah, 
uh, like they've got to be they've got to like cool the jets yeah so they can line up all the ducks yeah so if you're on the fence between hey do i want the fx3 version or do i want the epic games version fine slow slow down hesitate um yeah. and then decide once it comes out you know are you planning on only doing the epic game store version anyway yeah then there's where I'd put my money. And then if you were, rather than putting it in FX3 and putting it into Epic Games and you have a Switch, well, fine, now put it in Epic Games and put it in the Switch version. You know, do something yep. of that nature. Uh, uh, you know. And don't forget spread to... Spread it that around. As as time goes by and when this game, you know, hits the stores and is out for a bit, Zen is going to do what they always do and they're going to run promotions mm-hmm. around, you know. The, the Steam sales and stuff like that, or the Epic Game promotions and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're going to get a chance to get this game at a reduced cost. It's not going to be like ridiculously reduced. And it's going to be a little while. They're not going to put the, yeah. the game on sale a month from now. And Why would they do that? Like, it's ridiculous. Right. And whenever the game yeah. does finally go on sale, don't expect it to be at 50% off. No. You're gonna it's going to be, gonna be some money off. Like, it's going to be maybe 20 percent off yeah maybe if you get 20 percent off this game i think you're doing pretty well because the royalties and licensing tied up in this game is the most expensive licensed game that zen has ever done which is now going to be our point (laughs) yep because there's been a lot of this there's been a lot of discussion on discord on steam forums you know on digital mail fans uh i saw news article or you know on reddit You've got a lot of people that are screaming bloody murder over the fact that $15 is too much. How dare they charge this? Look at what they've charged for all these other tables. Yes, look at what they've charged for all these other tables and then realize what goes into this table. We've had this discussion so many times on this channel. about uh, Not only on this channel, but we've had it with Mel himself when yeah. we actually had him on for an interview. He went into the licensing details and how complex it was for this time. Right. So and, go back to that episode and re-listen to it. Um, <laughs> these things are not apples to apples. You can't sit there and look at Star Wars tables and go, hey, there's a, it's a movie license. Hmm. And, you know, has John Williams music in it. And we were able to buy three tables for $9.99. So why is this thing 15 bucks? Because it's a movie license. It's got John Williams music in it. You're talking about a deal that was made pre-Lucasfilm being bought out by Disney. Disney, yeah. Um, you're talking about uh, a different licensing deal entirely with John Williams' publishing company, music publishing, mm-hmm. that allowed Zen to use the soundtrack from the original trilogy. <laughs> one piece of music only. Well, that's not one piece. I mean, that's a lot of music for the trilogy, but able to right, spread right, right. it amount over the initial order of nine tables. Um, mm-hmm. Since then, they had to negotiate again to be able to plop it into other tables since. Yeah. But it's always the original trilogy music. You yeah, never get Duel never of the Fates different. popping up. <laughs> um, you know, and... Honestly, I was kind of shocked when we played Mandalorian in uh, VR and there was the music from the Mandalorian. They obviously... Well, you know why, though? Why because a completely different composer. And, like, his music is everywhere. It's even in the Stern Pinball right. version. Not only that, but uh, it's a modern contract yeah, with correct. a product that's still actively in development. Not yep, that's right. licensing music from a movie that came out 40 years ago with a composer who is arguably, you know, in the, the top three composers of all time with exactly. one of the most iconic pieces of music <laughs> of all time. Yeah. Um, you know, and somebody was talking about uh, mentioning, well, you know, why would uh, all John Williams music can't be, you know, cost the same. Obviously, Star Wars is more popular than Indiana Jones. And I'd go, is it? Is his Indiana Jones theme any less iconic than the Star Wars theme, any less iconic than the Jaws theme, any less iconic than the E.T. theme, any less iconic than the Harry Potter theme? And I even went on to say, I don't know, I I know he composed the music for the first two Harry Potters. I can't remember if he composed Mm. it for the third. They They used Harry Potter themes definitely in the third, fourth movie. 
mm-hmm. quite heavily. By the fifth movie, they were only using it in the opening credit crawl. And by the final mm-hmm. movie, there was only a slight tinge of hint music of John Williams. Almost a light motif in nature. I know? guarantee he got paid handsomely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For every single one of those. Yeah. And I jokingly said he probably got paid the same amount to use those motifs as he did to compose the first film. Now, uh, that's probably mm. not necessarily true, but... That is pure speculation. Pure speculation. However, but I think um, about with Danny Elfman logical. composing the Simpsons soundtrack, or not the soundtrack, the opening theme, mm. <laughs> he receives, this is ridiculous, something like 25 cents every single time that theme is played. 25 cents? Wow. Every That's single time. That's a lot of money. <laughs> yes. For each imprint. Wow. Yes. So He's as much as that thing like is in this. syndication, oh, yeah. <laughs> for, <laughs> for any iteration, because any time The Simpsons is played, you always, dun, 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 Even if it's yep. that much of it. Hey, here's That's some money. <laughs> yeah, here's a quarter. <laughs> you know, out. so over the long run, yeah, he made more in that than he did for the initial fee because I think he got paid an absurdly low amount. He did it just purely as a favor. Uh, yeah, right. That theme. Oh, he, here it is. Here's the theme, so I'll just yeah. knock it off yeah. for you. Yeah, um, yeah. But... <laughs> that often happens though, right? So like, you, I'm not you sure... You don't know how popular something's going to be until it's popular. No, no. So you can't go You can't go comparing, and especially you can't go comparing prices of something that came out seven years ago, price-wise, to, hey, prices do go up. I don't know if you've noticed um, inflation is... It's a thing. Uh, mm. You know, we were just talking about the price of gas. Yeah, it goes yeah. up. Um, but more importantly, the licensing that went into this. Again, Mel talked to us a bit for what he was able to say. We've speculated yeah. a lot about what we assume happens. Um, Based on our prior experience, what right. we know of licensing with Pimble Arcade as well. Right. And let's be clear. You're not going to hear this kind of talk on the Pinball Show. You're not. <laughs> it's, that is for promotion. It is not for deep diving into the ins and outs of how Zen works. This That's is never going to for. be that way. <laughs> if you want to hear that stuff, you come here when we have Mel on, and you can see us pulling teeth trying to get information out of him on some of these things. So, Because mm. <laughs> he's reluctant to talk about it. Why is he reluctant to talk about it? Because it's there's business. Things, well, it's business, but there's also things that... He can't say because he's contractually obligated not to talk about it with the people that he's licensing. Yeah. Yes. Now, if you're wondering why we keep on talking about licensing, because you cannot just dismiss licensing and what it costs. You can't just go, I don't care what the licensing costs are. Zen just needs to work that out. I just want my game at the same price as I've always been paying. Well, guess what? You're not going to get the game then. Because it's not going to make financial sense for them to lose their shirt so that you can play this game. They've no. got to have some profit, even if it's. But they just... have to keep the lights on. Right. Like, how are they going to do that? Right. Like, they can't absorb, like, let's say, for example, the licensing fees per table are 10 bucks. And if you want to play the game for $7, how are they, how are they going to make up the $3? With the added cost of development and marketing and all these things. It's like when you go, it's the same. I was having this discussion the other day with like, why is it so cheap to buy a can of drink from your supermarket versus out? It's like, because (laughs) the person selling you that drink has a whole lot of other overheads over it than you do just buying from the supermarket. Well, It's the same analogy. Not only that, but the drink is an area where they they keep the cost of the actual meal down to almost what it costs to make is what they're charging you. And then they uptick on the drinks because that's where they know they can earn their profit. It's the same thing you go to the movie theater. The The cost of the movie ticket, the theater barely gets the box office cut. Most of it goes to the studio. Yeah. Okay. Where do they make their money? On concessions. Concessions. Yeah. That's where they make their money. That's the agreement that you are basically having going in there. So now the trade off, because if you're going to be like, well, the concessions are too damn expensive. Okay, fine. So if they lower the cost of the concessions, guess what? They're going to just tack it on to the other end of the ticket price. 
So that it's got to be made up somehow. It's got to be made up somehow, except for contractually they can't do that because then the studio is going to take the money from the ticket price. So <laughs> that's, <right. laughs> that's where they're locked in. That's where it's, it's, it's this little fine thing. So this goes back to with the licensing. Guess what? Disney is notorious for taking a huge royalty cut on anything that they license. Why? Yeah. Because they know that the Disney brand is premium and that people uh. will come to it and expect a certain level of quality because it has their label attached to it. Yeah. Why are, why are Marvel and Star Wars Lego sets more expensive even though their piece count is lower than other sets? Shouldn't it be priced as the piece count? No, because they got to pay that licensing fee. Yeah, it's part of right. the deal. You cannot ignore licensing and just go, well, I don't want to deal with it. That's their concern. No, it's going to come to you. It has to. It, and it happens in every single product. Um, so in terms of licensing, A, Disney, they're going to take a massive cut. You also have to pay off Lucasfilm. Even though they're part of Disney, they're still a separate entity. <laughs> they, yeah, because right. Lucasfilm specifically controls Indiana Jones, yes. But you know, it's Indiana Jones is not on Disney+. Plus. Why is that? Oh, that's right, because Paramount still has distribution rights. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, I don't know if Paramount winds up getting a cut of this deal because they were only just a distributor. I don't know that for sure. No. Um, I've not looked at, again, I don't know if Paramount is labeled anywhere on the actual machine. Um I don't think it is. I don't think so either. But so and and that cut that Disney get gets, that is for every single sale of the machine. It's not a one time fee. They're getting a it's, royalty on every single sale. It's just exactly the same as any other piece of merchandise. Mm-hmm. Like if you buy a frozen doll, then that frozen doll has a licensing component in mm-hmm. it, which Disney gets. Yep. Um the other fee that comes every single time, the fee that they gotta pay Williams. They have a licensing deal with Williams. Yeah. So Williams gets a cut of the pie. Things that are one-time fees. The fee they had to pay Harrison Ford. It was astronomical. <laughs> 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 From what I have... Nobody has told us the fee. Mel's not going to tell us the fee, obviously. He can't. That's absolutely commercial even confidence off, information. Even off the air, that goes beyond the NDA that we have. <laughs> yeah. But, well and truly. But we have gathered enough clues and hints to know that it was steep. Yeah. Um, if you remember back with Farsight doing Terminator 2. Yes. And the Arnold fee. That one we happen to <laughs> know. Arnold's fee was about 60 grand. Yeah. Which basically made up most of the Kickstarter amount yes. for that table. Yes. Uh, From what I understand, Harrison's is significantly more than that. Yeah. That's a one-time fee for that. Um, that was just for his likeness, by the way. Yeah. It wasn't for his, well, probably likeness and his digitized voice in the game. Now, the digitized voice is all coming from the actual soundtrack of the movie. Uh, because I think yeah. only Sala, uh, 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 John Reese david he's the only one that actually recorded dialogue for the pinball machine. Am I correct on that? I think you could be right, actually. All the other ones are grabs from the movie, aren't they? Yes. Yes, but yeah. even still, those... he does like super jackpot callouts and stuff right, like that. Right, right. So yeah. even still, the, that auditory grab from the movie carries a fee. Yep. You had all the actors that are also on there, which, again, there's plenty in the back glass and on the play field itself. They all had to be paid for their likeness fee. Um, and if they had audio in the movie, they had to be paid for that. And then there's a problem as well, which we, we covered in previous licensing discussions. There's like the, and you'll know this term, it's the, well, if I'm getting that much money, if Harrison's getting it's that much favored money, nation. then favored nation. So that's the other thing they've got to factor in as well. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's so many different things. Yeah, because, favored oh, nation. he got paid this much? Well, I'm supposed to get X amount of dollars below, but guaranteed that I get that percentage below for whatever yeah. the payment is. Um, look, folks, there's a reason this is a holy grail table. <laughs> Because it costs a lot of money to yeah. put together. Um, now, you know, I'd, I'd we haven't even to touched upon... The, so that right there, the licensing costs in, uh, alone, if you look at the last things Farsight put out, which was the, you know, like the ACDC table, um, yep. and uh, what else, they had the Star Trek Mustang. table. Mustang. And Mustang. Well, Mustang, they didn't charge for it. That must have been a relatively inexpensive license. Um, Ghostbusters. Yep. They were charging 10 bucks per table 
on those. Yeah, they were. They were 10. And those were not Disney <laughs> licenses. Um, no. And they weren't, didn't have actors that were necessarily of the same status. Uh, with ACDC, it was the music rights. And there yeah. we go. Music right publishing is stupid. Yeah. Very, very expensive. Um, so there you go. Well, okay, maybe you could have had the table for 10 bucks, but you wouldn't have had John Williams' music. And if you say, oh, I don't need John Williams' music, yeah, go back and play the Jaws table. You, yeah. you don't need the John Williams' music, really? Because mm -hmm. that's just a table that has a shark on it. I'm sorry. It's it not really Jaws. It's shark in a boat. It's nothing without that theme music. Yeah. Um, yep. it's and and it is so well integrated into this machine that it would be jarring to not have it. Yeah, like um, the the entire like you know rolling theme music in it is a, a digitized version of the main theme of the show. Right, right. What were you gonna What are you gonna put there in place of that? Yeah, like. So yeah, please don't do what Farsight did and do a, a horrible take on big guns by ACDC or <laughs> Last Action Hero because that made me want to throw the table out the window. Yeah. It was horrible. Yeah. It sounded like a spaghetti western theme. It was just the worst. <laughs> um so, you know. No, music music publishing rights are insane. And the bigger the artist, the larger the the rights are gonna be on it. I'm yep. sorry. So if you want to ignore licensing you're not going to have the table. That's just, that's all yeah. there is to it. You cannot have one without the other. You have to recognize the costs of this. Um, that's just, that's part of the deal. It, it'd be like, you know, complaining that you went on to, you know, the, the, the car lot and you're like, well, I want that luxury car over there. How come it doesn't cost the same price as this, uh, you know, entry level car? They're both the same manufacturer. They share some of the same components. How come mm. this one costs so much darn more? It's a ripoff. Yeah. No. And here's where I say, is 15 bucks a lot to pay? Yes, it is. That it's yeah, it expensive. Is. But here's the difference. Is it worth it? Yeah. Will you get 15 when in the case of me, it's actually $21 Australian yeah. here. Will I get $21 coins worth of satisfaction of playing this game as I would have to pay in the arcade? Uh the answer is yes. Because after the twenty one dollars is spent, it's free. Yeah, <laughs> like if you look at it like that. And so and, yeah, I'm going to get value out of that. Right. So you know, expensive becomes a, a question of something can be expensive but still worth it. Yeah. Other things right. can be expensive that you just don't feel that it's at at that price. It's not worth it. And truth be told, at a lower price, it still might not be worth it. Um, yeah, there's exactly. plenty of games that. I wait for game of the year. I'll wait the year to get game of the year edition so that it'll be a 10 bucks less and B have all the DLC that you would, would normally have had to purchase over the past year. That's right. And even then I'll sometimes hesitate and wait for the price to drop some more until it's finally go where I go. Okay. Now it's worth it for me to, you know, yeah. Now the value is there as far as I'm concerned. That's yeah. not to say that somebody else didn't get 2000 hours worth of value out of it previously. You know. Yeah, that's right. So, is it costly? Yes. Yeah. If they had put it out at ten bucks without the John Williams music, guess what the whole conversation would be about then? Yeah, it would have been about wow, this table is just you know soulless. Or yeah, it doesn't. Zen cheaped not... out, and they didn't. They didn't put in yeah. the, the Williams music. It's not the same. How dare they? You know. <laughs> Absolutely. The other thing that's driving me up a wall is I'm seeing people throw this around, and they've been throwing this around for some time, um, that it being a cash grab. Let me read the definition of what a cash grab is. It says, when a product has little or zero quality, has hastily, lazily been thrown together for the sole reason of making money. The product may also have no heart or soul and has no reason to exist other than to make a quick buck. Now, does that in any way describe... Any of the products that Zen has put out? Mm, don't think so. No. Does that even remotely sound like what is happening with Indiana Jones? Absolutely not. No. No. There are so many vaporware games out there, or, or not just vaporware. What's the word I'm looking for, Jared? Um, just junk games. Yeah, junk. We'll call them junk games. 
just because yeah. I can't remember what the actual term is. Uh, Smithberry games. Smurf. <laughs> That's Dude, a different thing. There altogether. are plenty of pinball games on mobile that are so easily cash grabs. Oh, there yeah. is there is crap that Farsight put out that is a cash grab. Hi, Orwells. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> For the fifth time? Yeah. <laughs> you cannot say this about this game. It's not a cash grab. I believe that Zen is charging a fair amount yeah, for fair what money it costs them to put this product. out. Now, if Zen proceeds to charge $15 for every single table that they put out, oh, then by all means that, be angry. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's a different situation. It is. This is, a, I would think, this is definitely a one-off thing. It's an outlier. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be seeing this for hardly any other tables. Um, I can think of, if they did NBA Fast Break, I know the licensing cost for that would be absurd. And I wouldn't it be would surprised be. if it would cost as much. If they do yep. World Cup Soccer. FIFA, good lord. Again, there's a reason why Farsight put out World Champion Soccer instead. Uh-huh. Because FIFA's costs are ridiculous. Yep. Um, you know, it, it's possible that if they put out Adam's Family, I could see that being. Just because, again, you're dealing with dead well, actor estates and you're dealing with potentially Christopher Lloyd, who we all know yeah, is notoriously Lloyd. difficult. There's a reason why he's not on the Back to the Future table. Um, yeah. And, you know, we already have prior art about how much that costs through mm-hmm. Farsight. Like, that's a known amount of money um, mm-hmm. about how much that costs to do. So yeah. it's the order of, like, nearly $60,000 or something like that. So, so you do have a choice, though, here. You can wait and get it on sale. And in the meantime, just go, hey, I'm waiting to get it on sale because I don't feel like paying this much. Mm. You can bitch and moan about it and not buy the table at all, in which case, great, bitch and moan all you want, don't buy the table. I will give you that. Mm. If you buy the table and bitch and moan and say it's still too expensive, but you're getting good time out of it, you don't got a leg to stand on. Sorry. Yeah. Um, you you bent over backwards. You complained about nothing. Um that goes to saying that all the people that are saying that Epic Games is evil and then you're going to download Epic Games and play, what's that say about you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that you like to raise a fuss, but you don't uh, walk the walk. Um, exactly. You know, or you can just uh, grin and bear it, pony up the money and enjoy the table. Um, I personally, I'm going to say this. On the Williams app, there's been questions about this. Uh they're offering the game for 15 bucks on the Williams app, which in the past, if you've noticed, the Williams app was charging more than, you know, once you bought all their coin systems, they were charging more money than what it was on Steam or any of the consoles. Oh, yeah. This is now the exact matching price. However, yeah. table parts are not dropping yet for you to be able to earn this table for free. In the past table parts didn't drop for any of the new releases for around three weeks to a month. Okay. They were doing uh, a limited time event right off the bat that would allow you to exclusively earn table parts for the new tables. Yes. Um, again, this that. was, this was for when people hadn't gotten all the collected, all the table parts for all the other tables. And then it became really thin with how, you know, like, I want table parts for the new table, not the other tables, you know, all that. So there was limited time events that would only earn you parts for the newest table, and you'd be able to, with diligent playing, be able to earn enough table parts to get this table up to a two-star level. Which is just enough to be able to play it. Yes. There's not a limited time event right now for this. So, yeah. I'm not paying the 15 bucks on the Williams app to play it. No. Because Zen to... openly admits that this app is is essentially no other updates will be pushed mm-hmm. to it. It's, it's and an abandoned I'm, app. And I'm counting on the fact that there'll be table parts eventually. Um, hmm. Yes, I've reached out to find out if there is an answer to that. No, I have not received an answer regarding it. Um, once we get an answer, we'll let you know. Because if it yeah, does just become, nope, sorry, India is purely going to be 15 bucks on the Williams app. You'll never earn table parts. Then that's good to know. Um, mm-hmm. Buy it now. <laughs> but it says on there limited sale time of 15 bucks for Indiana Jones. Yeah. That can mean one of two things. Either 
once the sale is gone, then it's all about earning table parts or the price is going to go up. Yeah. We'll see. One or the other is going to happen. I right. think it's going to be table parts that you're going to have uh, to then grind in order to get it. Yeah. So if you don't like grinding, buy now, gr- and then you won't have to grind later. Me, I I'm going to wait for the grind. I think that's how it worked with all the other releases did. they did. That's exactly how it went. Yeah. So but people that's, have that's short-term memories. Be. They don't yeah, remember right. these things, or they've just come to it and they're flummoxed about what is going on. Which, you know, fair enough too. It's been a while since we've had content it in is. that particular game. It <laughs> so, is. Yeah, the fact that you have a short-term memory on this is excusable. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I really had to vent. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's frustrating. Because I really do feel like we've talked about this topic many, many times. We've t- we, we love talking about licensing. We talk about licensing on this show all the time. Yeah. So, because it, number one, it's confusing. Number two, people don't understand it, and and it's always a, a point of contention for people when they're bringing up costs. Yeah, but if you lay it out clearly, usually you can get some of the people to go, "Oh, now I understand." Fair enough. Yes, it sucks as a like consumer, it. but yeah. okay, I understand. But again, yeah. if you're just going to, if you're going to say that, oh. Mel and Gassen are gaslighting us. They're just doing nothing but a cash grab. You know, again, look at that definition. You don't know what a cash grab means. You're just saying this because you're bitter. And yep. you don't understand that it's this or Zen becoming Farsight. Yeah. So remember the last time you enjoyed buying a new table on Farsight? Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? That's because they're not making mm-hmm. pinball anymore. Why? Because they didn't do good with their licensors. Because they weren't able to upgrade their engine. Because they couldn't keep up with the times, and therefore their product became old, dated, and broken. Mm. Is that Pretty what you much. really wanted Zen to do? No, you want to continue having pinball coming at you. For the next 10 years, yeah. which is their strategic plan. Yeah. So, so get on board or go away. Yeah. <laughs> like... And look, it's up to you as a consumer what you do. It's your money. Spend yeah, it how you it like. Is. But don't whinge about it if you don't understand it. Is. it. Look, I don't I don't think that paying a hundred and fifty bucks for crap seats at a theater performance is worth it for a two hour experience. Not mm-hmm. when you have to add in the drive time in, parking, uh, you know, the programs, whatever, all that goes into it. I don't find any value in that. But I'm not going to complain to the people that find that to be a absolutely fantastic experience. But on the same hand, those various people would be like, "But I don't pay ten bucks to go, or you know, fifteen bucks to go watch a movie." Yeah. You know. Oh, speaking yeah. of fifteen dollars, uh, I'm sorry. Did you buy Demon's Till? That was fifteen bucks. D- did you buy Pinball Wicked? That was fifteen bucks. Did you buy Time Shock? Hmm. That was fifteen bucks. Hey, those were all single tables, weren't they? And they didn't carry a single license at all. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. But oh, oh my God. Oh, gee, fifteen bucks for for indie. Oh no, a table that we've really desperately wanted. It's it's a holy grail table. It's it's finding you know the first Mustang ever built and expecting to pay the exact same price that you would for a Mustang built. You know, number Back in five thousand. Well, no, I mean you know the very first Mustang built in you know whatever sixty five. Yeah. It's not going to cost the same as number 17,000 that rolled off the production line because it doesn't carry the same weight. There's something no. different about number one, you know. <laughs> right. Anyway. Okay. <sighs> yeah. That being said, hey, remember that contest that we were talking about? Hope you caught mm. the two phrases that uh, Jared and I raised. Because we have done it. Rewind. You shouldn't have skipped through this whole thing. <laughs> That's right. Because they're there. They're there. They're not. There for long, though. Again, so. email us at blah, blah, blockade at gmail.com on March 19th at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. First five emails with the subject line, Rollers Contest, and in the content, the two phrases that we held up, you will win one of five copies of Rollers of the Realm. That being said, Jared... I think we're done here. Hopefully the next time we talk, mm. uh, there'll have been a pinball show that will actually maybe have talked about pricing within uh, pinball effects. I assume that's what this last show was going to be about. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a chat about that. Yeah, that'll be good. 
Um, and we're, we're going to have to table that idea of, I, I think that was good, what you kind of hit upon, to play with visual enhancements extras. or not to play with visual enhancements. Uh, which tables mm. do benefit, which tables don't. Yeah, we'll talk about that. All right, good times. Well, mm -hmm. until then, Jared, next time we're going to talk about... Stuff and things, as we always do. Sounds good. All right, folks. Catch you on the flip. See you later.